Hello, welcome. Thank you for clicking through to this video where I'm going to explain why it's vital that we stick to manufacturers' recommendations for multi-grade oils. And I'm going to show you, even if we just deviate slightly from the actual recommendations, what damage and the type of damage it can cause to an engine. And I'm producing this video in response to a lot of questions I'm getting of people asking if I can use such and such oil in such and such a car or in such and such an environment. So hopefully this will answer all of those questions. So in order for us to understand what the wrong type of oil would actually do to an engine, what damage that is, first we've got to understand how these oils work as the engine's working. So we can see there now I've got the very basic model of the engine and it's working up and down, it's going through the power strokes, induction, compression, power exhaust and we can see there that the engine's turning, the crankshaft's turning that is. And what we must realise is that when we first come and start a cold engine, the engine's starting to turn before the oil has actually made its way up to the areas that need lubricating. This oil takes a while to get up to those areas. It, goes through all these little pipes and capillaries here and even with the absolute correct oil in the correct conditions it can still take up to 90 seconds to get the engine lubricated. And whilst 90 seconds might not seem a very long time, if we imagine how fast these engines are running, how fast the pistons travelling up and down in the cylinder, even on engine tick over, and at that it's metal to metal contact rubbing against each other creating heat, it is actually detrimental to the engine. And just to explain this, let's say that this engine, just for an example that is, it runs on 15W30. Let's say that that's the manufacturer specifications for this specific type of engine. And breaking down that code, first of all we've got the 5W, that's the first part of the code. Then we've got the 30, that's the second part. So before I can explain what the wrong oil does to this engine, I've first got to explain what the right oil does. And in order to do that, let's start here at the 5W. Now this relates to how the oil will affect the engine when the engine is cold, so when we've just started the engine. And so the way this 5W benefits this oil is that when we first started the engine and the engine's cold, the oil will be cold. And so the 5 means that it's got a viscosity of 5, so it's very thin. And that means it'll get up to all of these areas and round to the engine parts as quick as possible. But the important thing to remember is this is when the oil is cold. So it's got a viscosity rating of 5, so it's thin when the oil is cold. So let's have a look at the other figure, the 30. Now, in the presence of heat, so when the engine's warm, the oil actually transforms and acts like a 30 grade oil. So it acts thicker, so that a 30 grade oil can stand the heat better. So in a nutshell, when this oil is cold, so we go and start the engine, it's got a viscosity of five, very thin viscosity to get up to all of those points to lubricate that engine as quickly as possible. And then when the engine actually gets hot, so it's up to working temperature or warm as I've just called it, then it actually changes its composition to act like a 30 grade oil in order to protect the engine from the heat because thin oil when it gets hot goes even thinner so it acts like a 30 to protect the engine. So there we are then we've got a scenario where we've got the correct oil for the correct engine in the correct climate. So knowing that this engine now runs on 5W30 oil let's have a look what would happen if we put the wrong oil in. And we'll take two examples here both ending in 30 but the start figure the beginning figure there will take a 0W30 and then we'll see what happens with a 10W30. So first of all, let's start with the 0W30 and it's the 0W we're looking in at here because the 30 is the same. So we've just started the engine now from a cold start and let's take a look what's happened. Basically what's happened is all those areas have been lubricated probably even quicker because that oil was that bit thinner than even the 5. So because it's a 0, it's got to them areas that quick that it's actually lubricated those areas quicker. Now please know that I'm not suggesting that you replace your 5W30 with 0W30. I'm merely suggesting that in my experience I've actually had no problems when I've actually swapped these engine oils when I've used little engines like this. I'm not saying you were to go and do it in your car or anything like that. So I'm not suggesting you do this at all. All I'm trying to explain is that when we've got a thinner viscosity of oil here it's going to get to those areas much quicker and 
We'll show you in a minute why that isn't a detriment to when it gets hot. In fact, let's take a look now why that is. Because we've got the 0W, then the 30, just like the 5W and the 30, when this engine gets up to working temperature, so when it gets warm or hot, the viscosity changes. It behaves like a 30 again. So therefore, it wouldn't be too thin under the presence of heat. It would be as thin as a 30 would be under the presence of heat. OK, so that explains what a number lower than the 5W would do with the same 30. So let's have a look what a higher number than the 5W would do. We'll look here at 10W30. And remember, we said that this first number relates to how the oil performs when the engine is cold and when the oil is cold. So, of course, that means that when this oil's cold, it has a viscosity rating of 10. That means it's twice as thick as the 5W and 10 times thicker than the 0W. So from a cold start then, when we first start the engine and everything's cold, we can see now it's going to take a lot longer for all of that oil to get up through all of them oil ways, through the pump there, and up to those little oil channels where it needs to go to lubricate the engine. So needless to say here, this could have a detrimental effect on the engine because we've got metal to metal contact when those engine parts are moving against each other when we start the engine without the sufficient lubrication quick enough to get up there and prevent any damage. So that's relating to the problems when cold with this oil. So let's have a look what would happen if we got it to work in temperature. Well, of course, when we get to work in temperature, we've got the heat, we've got the warmth there. It acts like a 30 again. So at this temperature, it's actually acting like the same as the other two. So what I'm saying is, if the engine could get to this temperature without having any damage from cold, then it wouldn't have any further damage when hot because it's just acting normally. However, I wouldn't recommend that you do put this type of oil in this type of engine. And you can see now why I'd say that, and I'm sure you'd agree with me. Because the thing we've got to remember with manufacturer specifications and oils is that when they develop these engines, they tell us to use certain oils for an absolute reason because they've developed these engines, they've made these little oil ways to the exact size they want them, and they know the clearance between the bearings, the certain space between the bearings, and that is the area that they want to fill with the oil efficiently. So they recommend certain oils for what they've made, if you like. All engines are different, and that's why it's vital we stick to the oils that they recommend. It's also to do with climate, where people live on the globe. For example, anyone who lives in a very northern cold environment, where it's sub-zero temperatures most of the time, they're going to need a really thin oil. So they're going to need that first code to be as low as possible. Of course, manufacturer specifications again, but generally, manufacturer specifications will dictate that that first code there, so something like 0W if it's really, really cold, because... We want to get that oil up to those areas as quick as we possibly can in that very cold climate because we know oil thickens as it gets cold. So we're going to have to use an oil that's specially designed to get up to those areas when it's cold. OK, so we've looked at what happens if the first number there is below or above recommendations. Now let's have a look what happens if the last number here is above or below recommendations. Let's have a look there. So I'll just pluck out a couple of examples again to make a point. And we've got a 5W20 here, which is viscosity below the recommendations because the recommendations is 30. And we've got a 5W50 here, which of course is above the viscosity recommendations. OK, so first of all, let's see what happens when the engine's cold. So we turn the key and try and start the engine. So the engine's turning over. And because this engine, the manufacturer has recommended it as 5W30. It's recommended the 5W. Well, they're all 5W. So that means that this engine is actually OK when it's cold. All that, all that oil is actually going up to the areas of the engine, ensuring lubrication whilst it's cold. So at the moment, it's performing. All of these oils, in fact, are performing as good as each other and are OK for the engine at the moment. And that, of course, is because they've all got a viscosity of 5 at this cold temperature. So let's have a look now what happens when the engine is warm. So when it's up to working temperature, let's see how these oils are performing then. 
Of course, now we're talking about working temperature, so now the engine's hot, we have to relate to this number because this is the viscosity of these oils when it's hot. So in order to show the performance of these oils then at working temperature, I want to do that using the crankshaft bearings here. So if we imagine now we're looking, we're going to use a picture now looking from this angle and then we imagine a cross-sectional view. So imagine we've cut the, the crankshaft in half with the big end bearing on there. And just to clarify, this part here is the con rod, that's there, and we've got the actual crankshaft journal going through there. And the main area we want to focus in at now is that spacing between the two. So the spacing there between the connecting rod and the main crankshaft journal there. Of course, this spacing here wouldn't be this large in reality. There would be a spacing there, but it would be more in the thousandth of an inch range. So. I'm just making a point here with making it this large so I can show the oils going through better. And a main point I want to make now is though that the gap between these two, as I've just mentioned, are different between manufacturers and between different types of engines. That's why we need different types of oils. So the gap might be wider on some and less wide on others. And that would depend on how thick or thin the oil should be. So always listen to manufacturers' recommendations. They know what's best for the engines that they've made. OK, let's move on and look how these oils perform on this particular crankshaft bearing then. And so we'll get the oils back at the bottom there. And first of all, we'll start with the correct oil. So the 5W30, which is the right one for this engine, let's say. And if we look now, because we're looking at warm temperatures, so we're looking at the optimum temperatures here in terms of heat, we're using the 30 figure. So if we have a look what happens there, that viscosity of 30, you can see there, it fills this gap nicely and stops these two metals rubbing together. Because of course, when the engine's running, that main journal in the center there is turning inside the big end bearing area of the conrod there, turning very, very fast. And so this 30 viscosity oil actually keeps these metals apart and stops any metal transfer and any welding together. And it drops out of there and falls back down into the sump at a good rate. So it doesn't, it isn't too sticky and it isn't too loose. It isn't dropping out too quickly because we've got movement there between them two metals. So let's move on then and have a look now at a 5W20 in this particular engine. Remember, we're at working temperature. So if we have a look here, no problem. We've got the oil up to those areas. We've got it inside the crank journal there, keeping those metals apart at the moment. But remember, at working temperature, this is acting like a, a viscosity of 20, whereas the last one was a viscosity of 30. So this is slightly thinner. And what's going to happen here is, as the engine gets to working temperature, as it's at working temperature, in fact, this is going to be thinner and it's going to drop out of that main journal more and go back down into the sump. So there's going to be eventually less lubrication up there, keeping them two metals apart. There's going to be slightly less, especially under load. When we use that engine and rev it high, it's going to need that space, that buffer between the two metals. And if it's too thin, then it's not going to provide the protection and those metals are going to touch each other because that oil is dropping out there because it's too thin. OK, so let's have a look now at the 5W50. So this is the higher viscosity when hot. So again, there's no problem getting the oil into the crankshaft journals and getting between those two metals again, because when the engine was cool, it was acting like a five. So it got up there. No problem. The trouble is now, because we're at working temperature and it's now acting like a viscosity of 50 and it's now acting like a thicker oil than what the recommendation is for this particular clearance between these two metals, it's actually acting as a drag onto those metals. So the middle part there, the crank journal is turning round inside, inside the big end bearing, but it can't turn round efficiently enough because it now finds itself in an environment where the fluid around it is too thick for efficient movement. So the viscosity has got too thick there to allow these components to move around inside each other and basically move freely in order for optimum speed of the engine. 
So this of course will reduce the engine's efficiency and also remember that when we're up at high temperature we really need all of that oil to get to where it needs to get and needs to get there very quickly because the engine's now running at a higher pace probably. So that engine oil does not need to be too thick because it's got to go through those small capillaries and it's got to lubricate all of those other areas. So I hope I've explained things there well enough and I hope that the content of this video has helped you. But if you know anybody else who you think might benefit from this video, please do share and click the like button and please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll be back soon. Thank you so much for watching.